Well, we have a great opportunity to be speaking with uh, Mr. Aaron of Blue Tree. And I, I want to say that you're almost bona fide Canadian because you have been here so much, my friend. How are you? I'm doing really, really well. Yeah, like, well, Flip, we have been here like two, three times every year for like the past six years. The first place I ever actually played was, uh, well, the first YC I ever played was YC Newfoundland. And uh, so we have we have great friends in Newfoundland, and we have like blasted all across the country. And uh, I love Canada. I love the vastness of it, and you have got epic mountains as well. I, I don't travel enough, and I mean you've had the opportunity to do it. it, it compare is Canada similar to home? Is it really different? Or I, you know, I don't get that chance to travel as much as you do. Oh wow. well, no. Well, okay. So Ireland is like well, we have like five million people on the island of Ireland and uh, you, I don't even know how many like you, you can, we can Google this or whatever but like I don't know how many you could probably fit Ireland into Canada like 10,000 times or something like that honestly it's like you can drive east to west in like two hours and then north to south in like four hours and if you don't get stuck behind a herd of cows then you know you can maybe doing like three and a half or something like that you know so but it's honestly it's tiny Green, super green. We have a bit of everything. If you're in the surfing, we are the third most popular surf destination on the planet. We have massive waves over on the west coast. And if you're in the mountaineering, climbing, we have a bit of that, but it's all a bit smaller. We don't have the Rockies, man. Last time I was out, I went to uh, Jasper, and we went ice climbing. Um, I actually took Mike Love from YC ice climbing, and we went uh, to the Moline Canyon. Epic, absolutely incredible. So, uh, would you ever consider buying a house here because you spend so much time here now in Canada? Well, uh, maybe if I had money, I might be able to do that. But um, no, I'm an East Belfast boy. Like I, you know, I love to travel. Um, it actually enlarges your vision. So you, um, you can kind of get in Northern Ireland. We are really quite kind of small mindsets at times, you know. And so maybe if you went to like build a church or something like that, you know, you could only maybe have the vision for like a, a 600 seater or a 700 seater because you've never actually seen, you know, like a, a, an expression of a local church that does look like a 2000 seat church or whatever. And so in everything we're a wee bit small minded. And so when we travel and when you get around the world, it's uh, you get to see that, but then you get to come back. And you get to re make a real difference, you know. And Northern Ireland is a changed place now. It really is, you know. 25 years of killing and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it is a different place. It's brilliant. And I, I love it. I really love it. How often do you get to go back? Well, so I'm married and I've got three kids. And I'm super involved in my church. And I lead worship there. And um, so I kind of would... It's not like I have a specific t term of when I travel or where I don't. But I'll maybe go away for two weeks and then I'll come home and be at home for like three weeks. But the trade-off is, is that when I'm home, I'm home. So like I take the kids to school, I hang out with my wife all day, you know, and she only works a day and a half. And uh, she's a dental hygienist. And, uh, you know, and, I, and then I pick the kids up from school and we hang out and we have these great times together. And then, you know, the trade-off is, is that they actually pray for me and they, they send me off, you know, they send Dali. Um, kind of on mission in a sense, you know, and, and I go and lead worship and do what we do, and then come back home and uh, and just hang out with a, with a family again, you know. So maybe like away for two weeks, home for three, away for a week, home for whatever. It's, it's no real set pattern. Does it make it uh, di more difficult now because you are married and because you have kids and because you are away from them? Uh, well, difficult is a, is a funny word. It's just different. Like if you're a single guy you know, or girl, and, you know, you're, you're running around the world on a, on a tour bus or, or whatever, you know, we, we travel in, like, we dodge caravans, you know, we all cram in and stick as much gear into these things as we can. That's a lot easier, and you can be away for longer periods of time. But um, my life is enriched because I am married, and I'm a father. You know, I follow Christ, and I'm a father, and that's my first priorities in life. And everything else kind of works out after that. Um, so it's different. I wouldn't say difficult. There are the challenges of making sure that everything is in place, you know, to kind of help support my wife when she's at home. But um, it's it's just different. I want to talk uh, new music and I want to talk new album. But uh, did you ever imagine when you first started doing what you're doing to where you are now that God is going to be able to use you like he has? No, honestly, like I, and I know it. Some people are like, you know, oh, I never thought that I would be doing this. I genuinely never thought that this is kind of what it would look like. 
I knew that I would always lead worship, but like I ran an outdoor store in Belfast for like seven years, so selling climbing gear and kayaks and all that kind of fun stuff. And uh, and then I actually became a window cleaner. And uh, and all of this was this kind of like just different stages in life. Um, and then all of a sudden, very quickly, I found myself like catapulted into this world of the music scene and managers and all of this stuff that I didn't understand a single thing about and, uh, and journeyed all of that out. Um, so I always knew that I would lead worship, um, but I didn't know what it actually would look like. And I have no plan B. Like I don't, I feel like this is what I'm built to do and I absolutely love it with, you know, like I, I genuinely just love it. I love to worship and I love seeing people, you know, we just finished leading worship. Um, and, you know, you're kind of standing there, it's like, you feel like the most privileged person on the planet. You know, you're like 10,000 kids, all hands in the air, just loving Jesus, you know, just paying homage to who he is. And it's incredible. Um, and so this has been an adventure, like a big, big adventure. And it, it continues to do that. You know, I'm never shocked. Um, or, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm always surprised at actually what happens, you know, and it's like just... You kind of sometimes feel like, is this ever going to end, you know? But I just, I love it. I absolutely love it. I always, uh, I like to ask, there are people who come up after your shows or who will send you emails and say, what you sung about, what you've written about has touched me, has changed my life. How do you react to something like that? It's, you know, it's funny because, so in Northern Ireland, like if you, if you begin to rise, there is this, uh, and rise is, maybe even a right or wrong word, but when you start to maybe shine a wee bit more and, and do a bit more, at times we can be quite negative, all right? Um, and uh, it kind of feels like at times, you know, it's like not everyone, you know, gets alongside and champions. And then there's a lot, I think there's a lot of people that, that really do. And so when we first started to travel and, and come over and I would have kids come up to sign things and take photos and all. And, and I, I, I really freaked out. I was like, but I'm, I'm just a window cleaner. Like, why? Why are you doing? You know, I don't sign things after church or anything like that. You know, when I lead worship back home, and uh, but it's just part of the journey of understanding. Like for me, I kind of see it as actually at times kids can't articulate maybe what they have experienced, and they're on that journey of trying to understand what is it that they have just walked through. You know, what is it they have just connected with. You know, and and, and in our prayers, it's the it's the Holy Spirit, and so sometimes they just kind of place that on you, and so. I always kind of guarded my heart when someone comes up and says, that was brilliant. Honestly, what I hear is like, I hear them say to me, thank you so much for helping me connect with the Holy Spirit and with what God wants to do in my life. Even though that's not what they verbalized, that's what I see and that's what I hear going on. And so that was always just something that I kind of just chipped into my life. You know, it was like when someone comes up and signs or, or wants any of that kind of stuff, I just kind of get this feeling that what they're saying is thank you for helping me connect with the creator of everything, you know, even though they don't maybe understand what that actually was or what they've just experienced. And so, yeah, it's it's an interesting journey, that whole kind of thing. So we talk about uh, the changing of seasons and, and the future of Blue Tree, and uh, I've heard rumors that uh, you guys are working on some new stuff. Yeah, yeah, I've just, so we've always been independent, so we've just done everything, you know, myself, and I've tons of different guys that kind of play in Blue Tree and they all buy into the same thing, uh, worship music justice. That's what we're about. And so um, we've all been off, you know, in, in different times at different parts of the world. And uh, and so I'd, I've always done things independent. We had two studio albums and then two live albums. And, uh, and that's cool. But it just come to the point there where it was like, I, I don't actually know how to do this. I genuinely don't know how to actually, you know, kind of get a wider reach and that's not me saying I want to be famous but I definitely want to have as big a reach because I want to I want to connect people to Christ and I want to see kids rescued and uh, and vulnerable children and orphans you know kind of fed and, and looked after and, and given education and uh, and so I met with Integrity and uh, we, we done a deal and we, we done a record deal and we done a publishing deal um, and, uh, and so I've literally just flown in from Colorado and where I spent a week with the whole guys from kind of Nashville and, and this great producer right there. And, uh, and I just recorded a new album. And so there's going to be some older songs and, uh, and new songs in that. And, and what they just kind of want to do is, uh, is just kind of put this thing together, which says like maybe in the world of like, you know, the 
gospel music awards or something like that. You know, it's like we disappeared for a while. And, and the reality of it is, is that I did, but I disappeared to Cambodia. I disappeared into Burma. I disappeared to different parts of the world, you know, and, uh, and kind of followed what my passion is, which is worship and justice. You know, it's about helping people understand that everything that we do is an act of worship to God. So whatever it is that you work at, teacher, whatever, that's your worship to God. And, uh, and, and then there's this other side of that, which is actually when the law was summed up in love God and love your neighbor. So we get the loving God part, which is the kind of worship side, but the love your neighbor, but that's the justice bit. And, uh, and so this album might be called, we're, we're still hacking around with names, but it might be like, you know, worship is justice or worship and justice or something like that. And, uh, and just get to tell a story of, of, uh, of what I've seen God do, you know, with my own eyes and some crazy scenarios. Such release when? End of August. All right. We'll be looking for it. Yes. Brother, you know, we appreciate you. We appreciate your guys and your ministry. We're going to continue to pray for you, and uh, we can't wait to hear it. Thanks a bunch. Appreciate it. Aaron from Blue Tree, and uh, just uh, phenomenal. And make sure that you pick up their album when it is in stores.